Hey there, my name is Rocco. I hope you're doing well. Over here we do das 3D tutorial videos to help you to get the most out of your own renders. Uh, what we're going to look at today, we, we've looked at recently various different ways of setting up lighting in a scene and doing different types of images from, you know, daytime sunny scenes to nighttime scenes to studio scenes, etc, etc. Uh, I wasn't going to do this particular video today, but I've been asked a little bit over the last few weeks or something about doing little portrait videos, close-up shots, portrait type videos. Uh, now, the principles in this type of video are just the same as other type of videos. We're going to be using the same techniques that we've used previously. Uh, we're just going to do it in the form of a, a, a portrait and add a couple of little extra things in there with other things that we could do outside of lighting. If we have a look over in our viewport over here, we can see we've got our model set up there. Uh, I'll get into the, the yitty bitty details in a moment, why she looks the way that she does. Uh, but if we were, for instance, just to come across to our camera, we can see that we've got a really close up view of our model really right there in our face. I mean, re ideally we'd maybe want to be a little bit further out for a real portrait, but I'm, I'm just trying something here, just something a little bit different. Now, before we get into the light, and I just want to cover a, a couple of little housekeeping things for a moment, if you don't mind. If we give a click on the camera, for instance, and then come down on our tabs to our camera setting, you can see that I've set up the focal length of the camera at 100. Now, that's kind of important because usually it's a default of 65 like that but at a 65 when you're doing a close-up shot you'll tend to get a little bit of fish eye in the lens and things will look a little bit distorted so we've gone in straight away to, to put the focal length into 100 to give us a nice little close-up view and it'll flatten the image slightly and take away that that uh, fish eye lens somewhat that, that we normally get in this situation you can also see I've applied some depth of field over here uh if we could come out to the perspective view and just have a look at what we've done here you can see the camera's quite close up to our model and with the depth of field that we've got set up we've got a really narrow band of focus right there on a face you'll see the impact of that and the effects of that when we get around to adding lights into the scene uh, also what i've done before we get onto the light and if we give it a click on our environment tab up here we can see that I've made the backdrop or the type up there. I've just clicked on the, the, the type there and put it onto a backdrop so that we get a colored background in there. And this is just the color that I've got applied there. Again, you'll see the reasons as to why this is the case when we add some lights in and when we are trying to do what we're trying to do. Now, if we were to come over to our render settings and come down to the environment tab, we can see that we're set up on environment mode of scene only, which means that the only lights that are going to be in the scene are going to be spotlights, point lights, and I'm going to mention emissives because we do actually have an emissive in this scene. You maybe guess what it is. If I come across to NVIDIA iRay, we can see that we've got this red glowing eye that our cyborg has, you know, because every cyborg needs a red glowing eye. And the reason why we've done that and how we've done that is if we give a click on the model and come down to our Genesis 9 figure, come down to the surfaces tab and then down to eyes, Genesis 9 eyes and eye right in this case, I've just applied this all this little texture. If we look at the bigger image, you can see I've just found this eye online somewhere and I've plonked it down on top of the cat one of the character's eyes and created my own little texture so that back in Daz we've applied it to the base color and then we've if we slide all the way down to the emission emission color I've applied it in there and I've just created the luminance up at 10,000 as you can see just so that it glows nice and red and like I said it complements our cyborg and so now what we're going to do is we're going to start applying our light into the scene and we're going to use the same techniques that we've used before three point lighting system uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to come round to our perspective view and we're going to place our first light in this, the key light, at roughly the standard position where we'd always place it, which is about a 45 degree angle from our model, slightly looking down uh, at where that she is. And so when we positioned our perspective, perspective cameras to where we want it to be, if we come up to create on the spotlight, we do apply viewport transforms to place the camera at the perspective view, click OK and we get the light roughly where we want it to be. I might have to do a little bit of fiddling around with this. So if I come into spotlight as a camera and just move it around ever so slightly as to where I want it to be, I might have to fiddle around with this off camera to get it right. But once we come back to our main camera 
and click over onto Nvidia iRay so we can see the effects we end up with what we've got there. We need to brighten it up and we need to soften the light and somewhat like we always do. So if we just give a click on the light again and come down to the light tab, we're going to turn the geometry over to rectangle and you know, you'll see me doing this every single time. This is just to soften the light somewhat. Now this time I'm actually going to go for a 200 by 200 size rectangle. rectangle. That's a two meter by two meter rectangle. It's quite a large light. And that'll really soften the light for us somewhat. But of course it also darkens the image. There's a wider, surf, bigger surface area, same light, therefore the light ends up being dimmer. Uh, so what we're going to come to do, we're going to come down to our luminous flux. And I have a number in mind for this, which is 250, one, two, three, 250,000 lumens. And our model ends up being very nicely lit just by that one single light. Now, there's another thing that I'm going to do here, which uh, I do play around with on occasion. And it's a bit difficult to see at the moment because of the way that Daz is carrying on. So if I just come here a moment, pull that up, pull it up a little bit further. Okay, and we're going to come down when Daz gets itself in order. We're going to come down to the temperature. Now, the temperature of a light is... Uh, as it sounds, it, is it a hot light or is it a cold light? Now, funny enough, the, the, the colder a light is, the redder it is. So, for instance, if we were to come to the temperature and just make this 1,000, we'd turn the light very, very red. At about 5,000, we'll get the, the bottom end of daylight and 6,500 is default for what Daz normally applies. But what we're going to do is we're going to go up the other end. We're going to go all the way up to 10,000. Is that 10,000? That's 10,000. Okay. And we're going to click OK. And so what we'll get, we'll get this now a bit more of a whitey blue light coming in. It adds a little bit more of an effect into our model, as you can see. Now, the reason why I was very particular about uh, the position of the spotlight earlier on, if I just get click on there just to get rid of them lines, is because what I wanted to try and achieve is this little triangle just below her right eye, which is the eye opposite of where the key light is. This is known as Rembrandt light, and it's said to be one of the most flattering types of lighting that you can apply to a model's face, uh, created by, you might have guessed it, a guy called Rembrandt a few years ago. You might have heard of him, famous painter at the time. And it's just trying to get this little triangle, a triangle of light just below. If you can set your lighting up like that, and you can set up Rembrandt light, and you'll, you'll produce a very good flattering type of light so that's one of the things that you want to try and aim for but as we can see the rest of the model's face certainly over this side is in darkness so what we want to try and do now is apply a fill light just so that we can control the shadows over there the first thing that we want to do though is we want to come to our spotlight give it a couple of clicks and then we just want to name it we'll call it key so we know what type of light that is. And so what we want to do now is we want to apply a fill light. And so what we're going to do, again, we're going to come out to our perspective view. And then we're going to spin our perspective view around, roughly in this case, to a, a 90 degree angle to our model. Uh, we can adjust it later on when we need to. We just come out of uh, iRay there also. And then again, with our perspective view in place, we're going to come to create come to spotlight again we'll apply the viewport transforms to place the light where our perspective camera is and again if we use the spotlight as a, as a camera and just position it roughly in line with our model's head and then if we come back to our main camera in scene and what we want to do is the same thing as we did before we want to turn it into a rectangle again i'm going to go 200 in size uh because I want it to be a nice soft light coming in, even though it's not going to be very bright. And when it comes to the, the brightness, I almost want to go just to 5,000. I don't want to do anything crazy. But once again, I'm going to put the temperature up to 10,000 to keep that light consistent between the key light and this fill light. So again, now, if we come across to NVIDIA iRay, and what we've done now with the inclusion of this fill light is we've just brightened up this side of a face somewhat. We're in control of the shadow. We can either have it darker, we can have it brighter, whichever we choose to have it. I'm going to leave it like that because that's okay for me. Uh, we've maintained this little Rembrandt triangle below her right eye. And we can just see a little bit of the detail over here now. Now, we just want to comment on this slightly. I mentioned way back at the beginning of this video that I put a little bit of uh, depth of field on the camera if we just have a click over here. 
And the reason being is because I wanted to get this little effect here where our model's face, the front of our model's face is all in uh, focus as we can see, but even when we get to our ears, our ears are out of focus. And this is why I kept it so tight like I did over here uh, when I was setting up the uh, depth of field earlier because I wanted just to her face to disappear into an out of focus look just to let it stand out a little bit so that all our eyes are drawn to her face and that's why i put the, the depth of field on the way that i did if i turn it off it isn't quite as striking as what it was previously you know now that we can see her eye and even around the neck all the detail in here but of course putting the depth of field on makes our model stand out a little bit extra from the background well, the only thing left to do then with the fill light is just to give it a click up in our scene, a couple of clicks, and then just call it fill, it's just so that we know which light is which in our scene. Now, we could actually be done at this point. We could leave it at that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but what I will do, I'll, I'll, I'll do the completeness of it. I'll put in a rim light, and we'll just see what we can do with a rim light. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to turn back into texture mode so that we've got free movement around. Come back to our perspective camera and I'm just going to rotate this around the back of our model, as you can see. Get it roughly in the middle where her head is. And then I am going to once again come up to create another spotlight, uh, apply it to the viewport transform and hit OK. And now when I come back around in front, and come on to NVIDIA iRay again. We just get a little bit of a highlight around the back of her hair and, and the back of her hair. But I'm going to do something a little different this time with this light. I'm going to come on to lights. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a point light and I'm going to leave everything as base. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm just going to change the colour. I'm just going to go to this ready colour here and click OK. So that our model now has this sci-fi like red tint around the side of it from, you know, matches up our eye colour somewhat and it just gives a little bit of consistency across the image. Uh, and now again, that now could be it. We've got our key light, our fill light. And if we change our spotlight name to rim, we've got all the lights that are needed, both for the three point lighting system and of course this portrait that we've got. But we're not done there. We're going to do something a little bit extra also on top just to make this image a little bit more arty and a little bit more artistic and a little bit, you know, maybe better if you want to call it that. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of tone mapping uh, to our model. Uh, if anyone doesn't know what tone map it is, it's just a way that we can add a few effects to our camera to make the, the image look a little bit different from the base that comes out of uh, the render engine that we can see. And what we're going to apply in this case is we're going to apply the crush blacks and the saturation. Now, what crush blacks is, it's basically saying to the render engine or the camera, let's make all the blacks in scene a little bit darker. So these shadows that we do see will be come across as a little bit darker when we apply crush blacks. Now, for instance, if we were to go up full and would apply the, the full one onto it, you would see that, you know, the image would become very dark. Any darkness that would be in there, that the, it would be dragged down a little bit. So much so that we can barely see our eye and everything's a little bit dark. A bit too dark, dark for what we want. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come this to 0 0.15 and I'm going to give that a little click. Uh, and likewise, we're going to play with saturation. Now, saturation is how vibrant the colours are in a scene. If we were to take saturation, for instance, and put a 5 in there... You would see that everything there becomes very bright, very vibrant, very ready because there's obviously a lot of red tints in the skin and whatnot. Uh, and likewise, if we were to come down and put a zero in, we would be down in the realms of a black and white image and a grayscale image, which, you know, we don't want. But what I do want to do, I want to lower the saturation a little bit. Uh, again, no reason why. I just when I was playing around, I just thought it, it, it gave a decent look. And I'm just going to go to 0.75 just to take off that little bit of readiness and that little bit of uh, intensity in the colouring that we've got. Uh, just to you know, try and provide this a little bit of more of a sci-fi type of look. Uh, so we've played around with the tone wrap map and we, we've got our image there. We've got all the lights in place. There's one final thing that I'm going to do in this image. Uh, before I applied the crushed blacks and the saturation, there was a decent highlight that the, the model had on her skin there and it's faded a little bit now both with the combination of the crushed blacks and the, and the saturation so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring that back but keep obviously everything else the way there is and we're going to have a little play around with the surface features at the moment 
of the model, this the skin texture. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on our model in our scene. I'm going to come to the surfaces tab and then I'm going to find our model in all the, the mess that's there. And what I'm going to be changing here is I'm going to be changing the specularity of the skin, the way that it picks up highlights and reflects light from it. And so the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to come up to this little filter box here and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to type in spec so that we filter out all the uh, everything else and just leave behind anything with spec in the name as you can see what we've got down there now the one that i'm only going to play with here is just going to play with this it's all does do and does specular reflectivity uh, it's currently set at 0 0.25 as you can see now if we were to put that into a one we can see that it's way too high and it's looked like she's almost got a plasticky skin. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to raise it from that 0.25, maybe just to 0 0.5, uh, just roughly there, just to make it a light, slightly more reflective than what it currently was. Um, and what we've done as it does begins to put itself together, we put that little bit of reflectivity and highlight back into the skin that was taken away from us when we did crush blacks. Uh, maybe it can go down a little bit less than that maybe to 0 0.4 maybe uh it's just to add that little bit of specularity back in there a little bit of reflectivity and a little bit of life back in the skin and so there we have our final image then our final portrait of our little cyborg uh, all done dusted and complete uh I hope you like the image and I hope you've got something from this video. We could have done things a little bit differently. We could have had a brighter image or a brighter studio where she was or, you know, we could do from a different angle or, you know, all these other different things. All the techniques that I've done in this is are exactly the same. All you maybe need to do is either brighten the lights up a little bit, uh, move the camera angles, you know, even change them a little bit if you want. Uh, but all the all the process is exactly the same and it's exactly the same with every single image you know you just apply these same basic things image after image after image and your renders will improve across the board so i hope you got something from this video i hope uh, uh, you think you know i've done a good job with it if so give us a like down below as that tells youtube i'm a better youtuber than what i actually am uh, and gives us a boost in the rankings uh, also if you've not already please consider subscribing uh, as that really helps the channel out and i really really appreciate that and finally if you you've got any comments or any questions pop them in the uh, section down below and i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can so thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye bye now